In this video, we're going to go over control of the cell cycle. This is going to include a discussion on growth arrest and the loss of this control in cancer cells. So there are proteins in the cell that regulates the cell cycle and they are called cyclins. These cyclin proteins control the progression of the cell along the cell cycle. They were originally discovered because their concentrations varied cyclically with the cell cycle. So as you can see in this diagram, there are a number of different cyclin proteins and each of their concentrations varies with the cell cycle. The control of the cell cycle is also mediated by different checkpoints along the cell cycle. So as you can see in this diagram, there are three main checkpoints, the G1 checkpoint, the G2 checkpoint, and the M checkpoint. The G1 checkpoint is also called the restriction point. This is essentially the point where the cell decides whether or not to commit itself to cell division because once the cell passes this step, it's going to undergo DNA synthesis and then it's going to undergo mitosis and cytokinesis. So this checkpoint, first of all, is really just determining whether or not the cell is going to proceed into the S phase. And what it's checking for is adequate energy reserves and DNA damage. Energy reserves is important because DNA replication is a very energy expensive process and DNA damage is important because if the cell has DNA damage, then it doesn't want to divide to form identical daughter cells that have the damage. The second checkpoint is the G2 checkpoint, and it's also called the DNA damage checkpoint. This determines whether or not the cell is going to proceed from the G2 phase into the M phase. And this checkpoint is looking for errors in DNA replication and also looking for DNA damage. And that makes sense because the G2 phase occurs after DNA synthesis has happened. So the cell is checking to make sure that the DNA has been properly replicated. The third checkpoint is the M checkpoint, which is also called the mitotic spindle checkpoint. This will determine whether the cell will proceed into anaphase of the M phase. And essentially, this is checking to see if the sister chromatids are correctly attached to the mitotic spindle. Okay, so these are the different checkpoints during the cell cycle. Let's now look at what happens if a cell does not pass one of these checkpoints. At that point, growth arrest occurs. So growth arrest is essentially the arrest of the cell cycle. So the cell cycle is stopped at the point because the checkpoint has not been passed. This can occur during the cell cycle if there is DNA damage or some error in DNA replication. Now, the first thing the cell is going to try to do is repair the DNA damage or the DNA replication error. If the error or DNA damage is correctly repaired, then the growth reverse is reversed and the cell will continue along the cell cycle. However, there are some situations when the DNA cannot be repaired. And when that happens, the cell will either trigger apoptosis. Essentially, the cell decides this is a cell that should not continue. So apoptosis is called programmed cell death, and it's a very regulated process where a cell essentially destroys itself from the inside, preventing any of its contents from affecting nearby cells. Another option for cells that cannot repair the DNA is to enter senescence. Senescence is a permanent arrest of the cell cycle. So this is irreversible. The cell essentially arrests the cell cycle and it won't continue along. All right, so the last thing I want to look at is cancer. So as we've discussed in the video looking at cancer, cancer cells are able to grow and divide uncontrollably. And as we've discussed in this video, there are these cyclin proteins as well as these checkpoints that regulate the cell cycle. Cancer essentially has mutated many of these genes that regulate the cell cycle. So many of the genes that suppress the cell cycle have been mutated so they are non-functional. So the cancer cells don't respond to growth arrest signals. And similarly, the genes that will essentially trigger the next step of the cell cycle, 
the cancer cell is autonomous and able in being able to drive these processes so essentially the cell can just keep doing the cell cycle over and over again producing its own signals for cell division and not responding to growth or rust signals and this essentially results in the permanent activation of the cell cycle